abnet.com. Little statistic for you. Since the beginning of 2012, we're almost now to August, so we've got seven months in. Pretty much seven months in. Since the start of 2012, the death count in Chicago is 274. In seven months, the death count in Chicago, 274. And they have some of the strictest gun laws in the county, just as they do in the country, just as they do in uh, in Colorado. You know, all of us, um, all of us have certain traits that reflect upon our character. And when those characteristics, when those traits cluster in a manner that causes a person to function in a socially reprehensible or irresponsible manner, then that person is said to have a character disorder or a mental disease or disorder of some kind. So early Friday morning, I get up preparing for the day of qualifying for a weekend member guest golf tournament up in Connecticut. And I learned what everybody else knew at the time, that a mentally ill kid, young man, engaged in the mass murder of innocents the night before in a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. His uh, minutes of pure, unspeakable evil and depravity took a great deal of planning and a lot of cowardice. I was talking to some people last night. Why would somebody do it? Knowing full well they're going to get caught. Why would somebody do this? You know, everybody looks for the rational explanation. For the irrational. Who can know? Who can possibly relate or understand that the vast majority of people in the world can't relate to or understand this, so we yet we can try to psychoanalyze it. And everybody has their opinion. But the question I got is he knew he was going to get caught, knew he was going to spend the rest of his life in jail, knew he might be put to death. Why do it? The first thing that came to my mind as an answer that, like everybody else, is flailing away trying to explain this. First thing that came to my mind was fame. Charles Manson, still very famous. Charles Manson, solitary confinement, still very famous, gets to live with the idea that everybody knows who he is. We know that young people in our culture are consumed with fame. We know that young people in our culture are consumed with being known. They literally vomit every detail about themselves, every opportunity they have, be it websites, places they go, it doesn't matter. They literally want everybody to know everything about them. The pop culture in this country rewards fame for the sake of fame. You don't even have to do anything. You don't have to be accomplished anymore to have fame or to be famous. You just have to be famous. And people think that there is glamour and wealth and fun and uniqueness attached to fame. And so more and more people are pursuing it. And whatever you want to say about this guy, what's his name? Thorpe? Holmes. Holmes. Yeah, James Holmes. I forgot. I should have called Brian Ross to find out his name. Should have called Brian Ross to find out where the guy grew up and what he did. How about, how about you know, it's amazing. The first P, I mean, I, fact didn't even cross my mind politicizing this. But that's the first thing that crossed the minds of supposedly reputable journalists. The ABC investigative unit did a Google search. I mean, it's, it, it, now, back to the event of the shock upon learn, of learning of, of nearly incomprehensible mayhem, ruthlessly inflicted against living, breathing, caring fellow human beings, was interrupted by opportunistic, politically ill leftists. 
politically ill leftists. I mean, before anybody could absorb the loss, before anybody could comprehend the loss of friends and relatives of those who were murdered in cold blood, before anybody could really begin to grieve for those that we didn't even know, Brian Ross and George Stephanopoulos on ABC have breathless breaking news that turned out to be as wrong as anything in media has ever been wrong. Everybody talking about Brian Ross. What about Stephanopoulos who set him up? Can you imagine how that went? These guys show up for work Friday morning at Good Morning America. Stephanopoulos says, hey, hey, Brian, why don't you see if you can find some link to the Tea Party with this guy. Maybe he listens to Limbaugh. Maybe he listens to Becker Hand. What's he going And Russ already have. Already found a George Tea Party. Oh, good. Good. We'll go with it. Something like that. So there was Brian Ross, desperate to find. Here we have uh, an unspeakable human tragedy. And people who tell us that that they are the last reservoirs of compassion in America. They are the truly sensitive, caring, thoughtful ones. First instinct they had was to what? Try to find a way to help Barack Obama with this unspeakable tragedy. Try to find a way to help Barack Obama. Try to find a way to help the Democrat Party. Brian Ross, desperate to find a link... That would help Barack Obama. Obama, how, how despicably partisan do you have to be to have this knee jerk suspicion? Brian Ross said in the air there's a Jim Holmes of Aurora, Colorado, page on the Colorado Tea Party site as well, talking about him joining a tea party last year. We can't say for sure, but we're going to say anyway. We can't say for sure, but we're going to say anyway. And say they did. Then they said, we'll retract it. Then they apologized for it some hours later. Nothing like a little mass murder to bring out leftists who suffer political illness. Here we have, yeah, this could be his Oklahoma City. I'm just getting this could be. This could be Barack Obama's Oklahoma City. That's right. This could be Gabby Giffords. This could be Obama's chance to redo the Gabby Giffords circumstance. This could be Timothy McVeigh's Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah, yeah. That's not the first time they've tried this. Clinton tried blaming me for the Oklahoma City bombing. They tried to blame Sarah Palin for the Gabby Gibbard shooting. And, of course, then when all that bombs out, then they go blame the guns. They'll never blame the movies because they're not going to ban movies. It's easier to talk about banning guns. They got folks in this horrible Colorado thing what they were hoping to get out of Fast and Furious. I think this is what they wanted out of Fast and Furious. I think this is what is in the documents that Holder and the boys won't release to Daryl Ice's committee. But it's just... uh, It's just an unspeakable shame something like this happened. From somebody apparently has no remorse, and that's why I wonder about the relevance of fame in this. And there may be none. It may be impossible to know. It, it might likely be that we won't ever know what the real reason why. They say they found a Batman comic book back in 1986 that's got some relevance to this. That's a problem with looking at this politically. It's a problem with trying to politicize everything. All for the, for the sake of trying to help Barack Obama in an election from people who tell us that they have the lion's share of compassion, sensitivity, feeling, understanding in our country. Meanwhile, in Chicago, the death count since the start of the year is 274. Some of the strictest gun laws in the country. If all 274 had happened on one day, we'd have a whole different perspective. As it was, what, 35 happened in a weekend? 
And the mayor came out and said to the gangbangers, leave the kids alone. Go take your stuff to the alley, but leave the kids alone.